whether you're talking about a fairy tale or you're talking about a film or a book, there is this hero's journey. For a hero to be successful in a narrative, he has to come against some kind of conflict, really. Without conflict, there's no story. Without a story, there's no hero. You could tell just as deep a story in fantasy as you can in any other genre. It's just a matter of what you do with it. Fable 2 is set 500 years after the end of Fable 1. The land of Albion at this time has forgotten all about heroes. Uh, sort of heroes have kind of fallen out of the world. Technology has moved on. Heroes are no longer part of that landscape. There are still a few people who have the old ancient heroes bloodline in their veins and your character is one of those people. It's true. Your blood. You are heroes. Well, you know, some heroes start out as already fully blown heroes. I mean, Hercules came out of the cradle strangling snakes, but most heroes have to go through some kind of progression. It makes it more fantastical and more interesting to see someone go through some trial for them to be a hero. Well, for me, that great story starts where you have no power, where there is nothing. So when we first meet the hero, he's not there yet. He's not become that heroic character that we want him to be. Our hero is a poor, poor child. No parents, has a sister, uh, living on the cold, hard streets. After running around as a little kid for a while, you're called to meet this character called Lord Lucian. And he's working on this huge project. I'm working on something wonderful, for which I need individuals with particular talents. Every great epic story has a character that really does something to create havoc for the hero. And Lord Lucian is that character. He's used to being in, in a position of power for so long, he's forgotten his humanity. His wife and daughter are dead, and he's seeking a way to revive them. He will go to any means to achieve this end. And I mean, absolutely any means. I think the same way that we're drawn to heroes now who are flawed, who are normal, that feel like us in some way, the same is true for the villains now. Giving them some kind of motivation a player can understand makes them so much more interesting than somebody with a twirly moustache and a, a silly evil laugh. I think what makes a villain interesting is when he really believes wholeheartedly in what he's doing, no matter, you know, how horrible it is. Chaos cuts innocent lives short, and we're to accept this as fate. I beg to differ. And there must be planted in the back of the, the viewer's mind a little bit of a wish to be that villain as well. So Lord Lucian is not a very nice person. You get off to a really rocky start with him. Things sort of start to go downhill pretty fast. Revenge in any story is a great motivator. From there you grow up a little bit more and then re-meet him and discover that he is building uh, a piece of architecture that has once wiped out the world before and will do so again. And there is this deep need to see heroic characters stop an apocalyptic vision from happening. We could walk away from it or we could get involved in it, and if we get involved in it, boy, there's gonna be a big ride. It's the most intrinsic building block of story. It's a character, a hero, changing. Okay, well, how's that gonna happen? There's no avoiding it. You're gonna have a mentor. You know, somebody who, who you can sort of turn to when things get tough and to just let you know that you're on the right path. In, you know, uh, Empire Strikes Back, it's Yoda, who's a classic mentor. The classic sort of mythological mentor is usually there to take the hero and the conflict and jam them together. By your actions, you could make Old Town a safer place. If there were no mentor, the hero would probably remain in their own happy little world. So you could actually say mentors are probably more responsible for creating misery in the world than anybody else. In our particular case, our, our, our key mentor is a figure called Teresa, who is a blind seeress. She saves you from the initial family tragedy, uh, and then from there guides you on to your destiny and shows you the way to become a hero. Today, you leave the safety of this camp and seek out Lucian. The journey will not be easy. But right at the center, where you've got the hero and the villain and the mentor, you've got the sidekick. If it weren't for sidekicks, who the hell would the hero show off to? Who would be there to say, good lord, that's extraordinary? There's a classic idea of a sidekick where they're, they're a comic relief idea. So the, the heavy story that the hero is going through is complemented by some of the more kind of tomfoolery that happens with the sidekicks. Well, when we first thought about creating uh, another character to, to be a companion for the hero, we considered 
a whole bunch of fantastic things. And eventually we had just one of those moments you have when you're creating things, which is fantastic. Why can't we have it as something like a dog? What's that furry thing bounding up and down? Can it do any tricks? There is something about having dogs that appeals to us on some sort of primal level that we don't even really understand. What you need is someone nice to look after you. <laughs> really, the emotional bond between a man and his dog, or a woman and his dog, is something really strong and tangible, and it's something we were all really passionate about doing. This dog absolutely loves you. A dog sidekick works. I just don't want some guy in yellow tights following me around or whatever, you know? Robin, acrobat, meh. I, I love the fact that there's a dog in this that's, that, that helps you um, when you're fighting and helps you find, you know, cool treasure and stuff like that. For a hero, that's gonna be very helpful to have someone who's got your back all the time. So I would say that we are redefining what a hero's journey is simply because we're allowing you, the player, to get involved. Kind of like a god karmic system, there's, there's, you know, the computer is tracking whether you're being nice or mean to characters, whether you're stealing, uh, whether you're behaving morally or whether you're behaving immorally. It's always fun to sort of test the limits. It's like, well, how much of a d can I be before I'm truly branded as evil? And it's like, and how, how nice can I be before I start losing my edge? Mmm, nice. I just think it's more fun to be bad and stuff like that, but it breaks my heart, man. I can't do it. To be honest, I haven't done very much evil in the game. I liked kicking the chickens, because I would never kick a chicken in real life. I, I, I want to play bad. I want to I wanna go evil. I want to do horrible things, and, and I want to I wanna kick my dog a couple times. They put you in situations where if you want to, to push the bad guy off the cliff, as opposed to bring justice, you can do that. But are you less of a hero to, to people? I think all of us sort of want to be bad sometimes. Are you ready to spend? We all want to not do the right thing. Ah! We all want to see what might happen. You have entered a venerable society of dark worship with a long history of wicked deeds and opprobrious transgressions. Fridays is poker night. There's no real, like, convenient forum to be really evil in your day-to-day -day life unless you're kind of a, a uh, but in the game, you know, sky's the limit, so why not? You, you might start off as, a, as an evil character because it's fun, but then I think eventually you end up playing more like the person that you want to be.